Coming to you live from downtown Phoenix at the beautiful Arizona State campus, this is the Harris Highlight Show, episode 9. Now, I know how we normally start off the show with uh, going over the latest power rankings or the playoff rankings, so you call it, but we're filming on a Sunday evening this week because it is Thanksgiving and we are all going home for the holidays to see the folks and the families and whatnot, so unfortunately, the playoff rankings have not come out by the time we're doing this, so we're going to be... Doing what we can, but guys, before we get into anything, there was an upset yesterday in college football. A great, a, a great upset. The Alabama Crimson Tide upset the Chattanooga Mocs yesterday, so I do want to talk about that. Congratulations to Alabama. Congratulations to Alabama on a hard-fought victory. Um, still trying to figure out how they won, but what a game. They scored more points. They did score more points in the so, Chattanooga Mocs. It's a very hard-fought game. I do have to say... And all the games I've watched in my life, I don't think I've ever been that passionate for a team. I ever. think you're right. Gentlemen, let's go! Tonight, sleep on Chattanooga! Let's go! I will say this, though, about the game. That was the second least amount of points Bama scored all season. And if you asked anybody who knew college football at the beginning of the year, who will uh, keep Alabama to the second least amount of points they've scored all season? Nobody would have said Chattanooga, besides us, probably. So that was pretty impressive, in my opinion. So the final score was 31-3, to but I feel like that score does not do their defense justice. Also the least amount of yards Alabama has had all year, too. Yeah. Played this defense, for those half. that watched the game, it was 14-3 well, to at the half, correct? Yeah. It should have been 7 It should have been 7 we'll, seven. we'll talk more about that, but yeah. this defense came ready to play. I think aside from that, like, 50-yard just no coverage touchdown in the first quarter or the second quarter, I don't think Alabama had any really huge plays. Like, that, I mean, that even there were some hits also that Jalen Hurts took. My goodness, this did not look like an FCS school. So this defense came ready to play. The offense, though, is another question. Now, there were some plays where they looked good, like that opening drive, but some of their third down calls were very questionable. I, th I think it's the best part that Shenanooga had the lead. And they held the lead in the first quarter. Mine's not loading. We're winning! Chattanooga! The best, yeah, the best part was after they got that field goal. And by the way, I think I was telling this to Lyle. Since there was that overlap of the Texas-Kansas game, there's like no official film of the kick. Like, if you go to YouTube and type in, like, Alabama, Chattanooga, full game, the game picks up from, like, six minutes left in the first quarter because that's when, like, the record happened. And if you go to ESPN.com, there's, like, no videos from whatever happened in that play. So there's no actual footage of their field goal kicker hitting that 48-yard field goal. Wait, Except really? for my Snapchat. So I'm kind of bummed about that, but it was great. I was also talking to this about Lyle. When that kicker came out and they showed him for the first time, we're going, oh, no, this is Penn State kicker 2.0. Got to like, admit, we judged him. We were judging him, but he Proved nailed that. Who does wrong? Oh, he got it! Yes! 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 Really quickly, though, I do have the stats for the entire game. Alabama was held, held to 14 first downs. That's Chattanooga had 10. Wow. Third down efficiency. Alabama was 4 for 13. Unfortunately, Chattanooga was two for thirteen. Uh. Total yards, as Brady mentioned, I think I think this is the least amount of yards they've had in a game all year. Three hundred and thirty-two. Total. Jalen Hurts threw for hundred and thirty-six passing yards. Hundred and thirty-six, and it's not like he came out after the first quarter because it was a blowout. He played the entire game, and he only had hundred and thirty-six. Now rushing yards, two hundred. Penalties is another great thing. Chattanooga only had two penalties. Playing against a team like Alabama and only having two penalties, my goodness. And another thing, too, the fact that they were only they only lost by 28 when they had their backup quarterback playing probably about half the game because their starter came out. What, what are you thinking if you're on the bench? You're the backup quarterback to an FCS school, and the coach says, hey, bud, 
you want to go on in right now and play Alabama? <laughs> like, what are you thinking? Put me like, in, coach. Like, I'm not going to give him any any disregard there, but that I Chattanooga, they played a hell of a game. But now, really quickly, not that we're biased or anything, that we're going to give Alabama the discredit for the win. There were some very, oh my. very questionable calls in this game. Now, I'm sure there was a good amount of people that watched the game that can back us up on this. The first one I want to mention, and this is the one that really upset especially Lyle and I because I think this kind of impacted the game was the muffed punt in the first quarter when Chattanooga was up 3-0 after they forced their second 4-and-out, or 3-and-out for Alabama. The Alabama player pushes the Chattanooga player right into the, in the, into the receiver, and he muffs it. No call. Now, I think Brady said that that's not a reviewable play, so there's nothing you can do about it. But It's only reviewable the other way around. So if they call it on the field, they can review it and undo okay. it. They can't call a non-call and then call a penalty on that. Yeah, and they were showing the replay over and over, and it was obvious that the Alabama guy pushed him in, and you know that 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 led to the touchdown. But I will give Chattanooga credit because on that drive, they forced Alabama to a fourth and goal on like you know the five, and then no one covered the tight end, and Alabama scored. And then the next drive, Chattanooga they were storming, rushing the field, or no, Alabama had the ball, and they fumbled it, oh. and Chattanooga. Ch- you watch the re- right there. You watch the replay, and they had the ball for a Chattanooga. A Chattanooga guy dove on the ball, and somehow, when the refs pulled everyone off the pile, the Alabama guy had the ball. So I don't know if somewhere underneath that pile, the Alabama guy stole it. But when that pile began, the Chattanooga guy was on it. Yeah. So I don't know if that's really a missed call or what, but Th- that's whoever comes up with the ball at the end of the pile. Gets a possession. I was with the same way with Lyle as soon as it happened. I'm like, Chattanooga has the football now. But as time passed, it seemed not to be. That's the thing. They were driving. I honestly think they could have scored on that play. But then again, there were some plays like where um, Chattanooga ran the ball. At, when, right when they ran out of bounds, a late hit came. Oh. There was about two or three I saw. None of them were called. None of them were called. You know what? It's Alabama. They get whatever calls they want. I'm just going to... Say that. Yeah, I mean the good thing to is to an extent, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, and that's especially when they're playing an MCS team yeah, in Chattanooga. Exactly. But that's that's but Chattanooga though. Once again, hats off. Time of possession, thirty-four to twenty-five in Chattanooga's favor. Only two turnovers to Alabama's one. Just everything there. Like if you were to compare these two, like if I were to say at the beginning of the season, all right, this was a game between one of their teams this year. Who do you think this was? You could say this is probably one of the SEC teams that put up these kind of numbers against them. Not an FCS school. Mind you, at the beginning of the game, let's not forget the spread. The spread was 48 and a half. The disrespect. Like, I remember earlier. I said it last week. That was disrespectful. 48 and a half. Like, I, was, I would have put a lot of money on that one. Just n- to have a team expected to win by 49 points, regardless of who you're playing. Even if Alabama played ASU. <laughs> well, actually, in that case, I would take the, I would take the spread. <laughs> But, it's getting to the point where I think Chattanooga could beat ASU. I think they not struggle. Like, it, it, it'd be a blowout. <laughs> like, it it was, but like I said, I think the highlight, though, of the entire game was Chattanooga taking the lead. Yeah, and that's so great. Us just, us just going crazy, whatnot. Our Twitters were blowing. I don't know about you guys, but my Twitter was absolutely blowing up. Everyone was tweeting like, oh, my goodness, no way, no way. And I know you guys all said the same thing, but I 100% meant this. I truly believed after the first quarter, Chattanooga could win the game. I, I was I, I was way. starting to have faith. Like, I, not that I haven't had faith like all season, but after the 3 nothing after the first quarter, Chattanooga was in it for most of the yeah. game. That's what I'm saying. Chattanooga put up a good fight against yeah. the number one team in the country. Well, see, after the first quarter, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, like, I, even the day before, whenever we recorded the podcast, we're all standing, like, when Blake was giving his, his heroic speech, like it was from Braveheart or something <laughs> like that, he's giving us this Braveheart speech, and we're all standing up, clapping with our arms in the air, like, high-fiving and stuff, and then after, kind of, whatever, like, doesn't matter, but then game day comes around, and I'm kind of sitting there, and I'm sitting in the hot tub with Spencer, and Spencer and I are chilling, and I kind of say, you know... What do you think the chances are that this happens? And Spencer <laughs> says, "Honestly, I'm not too sure. Like it's a po- it's always a possibility, but against Bama, and once the game started, Chattanooga was moving the ball so well on their first two drives. And, the thing and I about remember that thinking is, though, they could do this. Their their opening drive, but I, I forgot about it as well. Their opening drive, they, I think they had the ball. It was like third and five, 
they got a first down and they they pushed it to like the 15 yard line but then there was that penalty yeah, it for was a callback it was it was a 15 yard penalty that really screwed him over and it was like third and long or something and that's what led to the 48 yard field goal Chattanooga the way that drive was going I think they could have scored and oh man they would have scored a touchdown like the way we uh, the way we acted I think, I think over we would have died the way we acted over a field goal my goodness I probably would have jumped in the pool but honestly th- watching the pool that, was so cold watching that game yesterday was truly exciting it was just something about it it was just like the long awaited game and the fact that there were so many people like all over Twitter Instagram Snapchat that were just like getting as excited as we were and like I got about 10 or 15 photos of people watching the game there were some good ones so I'll just nice. put that throughout the entire thing there was this one of this guy where he was like holding a box of cheese it's in front of the TV and he's like this is all I need in life but, and there, there, was some, there was some great tweets too like this Jeez. one this oh, one Jesus. guy this one guy was like Hooters is sleep, sleeping on Chattanooga there was, a, there was a guy that was actually at the game no way and he was like I'm sleeping on Chattanooga you got go Bama, roll tide. But wow. I was like, oh my god, that's great. But lots of great tweets, lots of great photos. I'm How about that put... Nick Saban interview? I'm pretty sure he was sleeping on Chattanooga. Oh, Nick Saban was oh. definitely sleeping on Chattanooga as well. But also, Nick. I love the Chattanooga coaches interview when he came out of the tunnel. For that was, the that was great. What was your message in there? Well, I told him, I asked him to compete in the first half. I said, compete, fight them every snap. And I told him they did that in the first half. And I just asked him, I said, do it for another 30 minutes. Just fight. Just keep competing. Something positive will happen. We're getting first downs on offense. We're playing really well on defense. You played here last three years ago. Shut out 49 nothing. What's so different about this year? Well, I don't know. I, I think we got a good team. You know, they probably came in sleepwalking a little bit. I, I don't know, but our kids are playing hard and they're excited. I mean, coming out of that locker room, man, I couldn't, I couldn't keep them in there. They were so excited to come back out. Now, I hope we play good in the second half, but uh, awful proud of our football team. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. He, he didn't care that they were he losing. He was having fun. He was, he was enjoying it, and that's all that mattered. And speaking of great tweets, my own parents watched the game after watching our podcast and seeing how excited we got. They said, watching Bama Chattanooga game, go mocks. I mean, thanks, Mom and Dad. Oh yeah, we have. We need to get a video of us doing our "Don't sleep on Chattanooga" with oh, a sign. Oh yeah, and you gotta you gotta put that in. <laughs> but ha- continue, Brady. No, go ahead, Blake. Oh, but I was gonna say that was. I'm glad this movement started. It was a great fun movement. But guys, really quickly, just very quickly, I want you guys to get your phones out, go to your calendar app, and go to September 9th, and mark that on your on your calendar. In the past or in the future? In the future. In the future. 2017. In 2017. 2028. <laughs> because on September 9th of 2017, the Chattanooga Mocks will be heading to Death Valley <laughs> to take on the LSU Tigers. Don't sleep on Chattanooga. I know the game is 10 months away, but I can already assure you guys that the Chattanooga Mocks, they're going to be they're going to be practicing this whole off season. It's the second week of the season, so they're going to be coming strong. Who do they play week 1? Week 1 Chattanooga? Oh, yeah. Their schedule's not even out yet. I just looked at the <laughs> LSU schedule. But guys, September 9th, mock the world, baby. Mock the world. Also, yeah, that mock the world. One of my followers tweeted that to me. Great. great That's the new thing, by the way. Mock the world. Hashtag mock the world with with no K and hashtag don't sleep. But oh, yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, September 9th, Chattanooga, LSU, Death Valley round two. This year it happens. All right. All right. But as I mentioned, though, we're filming this Sunday evening, so the playoff rankings have not come out yet. So, unfortunately, we can't really criticize or talk about those. We but, can't criticize. Which we will. <laughs> but what we are going to do is, and this is going to be quite fun. Josh actually was the one that wanted to do this. We're going to give our own top 25 rankings. And then once we get to, like, the top six or seven, which, I mean, we, 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 can, just, we can assume what they're going to be, that we can really discuss about what they're going to be. So, guys, I hope you guys had as much fun as I did making these. Which what we're gonna do? <laughs> Brady's like, oh, we had a job. <laughs> All right, too well, busy working. I'm doing I, homework. No what worries. What I did oh, is that's I did... such a lie. Okay, so at 25 I have Washington State. At 24 I have Boise State. At 23 I have Texas A&M. At 22 I have Stanford. At 21 I have LSU. Am I doing 22? You're doing up to 20. Okay, and at 20 I have Florida. All right. So I have Stanford at 25. Wazoo at 24, LSU at 23, Tennessee at 22, Houston at 21, and A&M at 20. Utah at 25, they lost to Oregon. Yeah, the loss to Oregon really was the killer. LSU at 24, I'm going to say Washington State at 23. Uh, Tennessee at 22, they had had a pretty solid win this past week. Demolished Missouri. Um, 
Texas A&M at 21, and I'd say probably Boise State around 20. So for my number 25 team, I'm going to have Tennessee. I'm going to have LSU. The loss to Florida at the goal line, killer for them. Washington State, they cooked it up. Texas A&M, Utah, and then Boise State. Wait, you had LSU dropping out or at 24? They're at 24. Oh, I thought you said they're out. No. Apologize. It's all good, homie. You guys are going to go insane on mine right here, but hey, I had fun with it, and it's my top 25, so here we go. That's at it. 25, I got Toledo. You're off the show. Ah, <laughs> oh, dang it. At 24, I got South Florida. At 23, I have Navy. At 22, I have Wyoming. At 21, I have West Virginia. And at number 20, I have Stanford. So now, guys, let's hear 19 to 10. Whoever wants to go first, may. I'm going to jump in here since I went first last time. So at, at 19, I have Tennessee. At 18, I have West Virginia after the loss that they took. At 17, wanted to put them higher, but I didn't. I put Western Michigan. Oh, you. At 16, I have Nebraska. At 15, I have Utah. 14, I have Florida State. At 13, I have Auburn. At 12, I have OK State. At 11, I have Colorado, and at 10, I have Southern California. Hmm. All right, Lyle. Man, we have some similar picks, I just realized. <laughs> so I have Utah at 19, West Virginia at 18, Western Michigan at 17, Florida State at 16, Auburn at 15, Colorado at 14, Nebraska at 13, Florida at 12, Penn State at 11, and USC at 10. I just heard Colorado. Wait, no, my, my, I cut you off. No, you're good. I hear Colorado at 14, even though they won. Yeah, I, they don't have an impressive schedule at all. Wow. And with the two losses, I don't, I'm not going to give them credit. And USC at 10, yeah, they have three losses. But I hate to admit it, but Josh is absolutely right. They're one of the best five or six teams in They're the country the right now. They're the second hottest team in the country yeah. right now, I'd say. Yeah. I'd say they And too. so despite those early losses. Behind Chattanooga? Yep. Despite those early losses, I'm going to give them credit where credit's deserved, and they've earned it. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up with Lyle really quickly. And I, 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 Wait, where did you have Colorado at, 15 or 14? You had them at 14, and here's my thing is I really wanted to put them lower, but I was basing mine off of last week's rankings. So I wouldn't have Colorado. I would have Colorado, to be honest, around 15 or 16, but I didn't want to drop them too much even though they won. So I, I, I could totally agree with what Lyle said. Spencer? Yeah, so I'm going to start off at 19 with West Virginia. The loss they took against Oklahoma absolutely killed them. Next, I'm going to take Houston. They jumped up with beating Louisville. Next, Nebraska. Western Michigan at 16. And then I'm going to take Auburn, Florida State, Florida, beating LSU, winning the SEC East. Helps them a lot. Uh, USC at 12, Colorado at 11, and then Penn State at 10. So I'm going to, do, I'm going to have West Virginia at 19. Houston at 18, so sort of similar top three to Spencer. Woo. And uh, Nebraska at 17. I'm going to go Florida State at 16. Auburn at 15. Florida at 13. 14. 14. Western Michigan at 13. They oh, need I to get a big it. jump. I love it. Louisville at, I'm going to say 12. Oklahoma State will go to 11. Fight on. USC at 10. All right. I love it. All right. Number 19, I got Tennessee. Then I got Boise State. Then I got Florida State. I got Louisville. Then I got wow. Houston at 15. I, I feel like Houston, after that win, should be ranked higher than Louisville, without a doubt. If you're going to say Clemson should be above Louisville, then why can't you say Houston can't be above Louisville? 14, Nebraska. 13, I got to row the boat with Western Michigan. 14. 13. Oh, well, 13. Okay. 12, Oklahoma State. 11, Colorado. And at 10, I got Florida. And now we'll get into the fun part of the show. So at 9, I have Penn State. At 8, I have Oklahoma. And then at 7, I still have Louisville because I think they are still one of the best teams in the country. Okay, so I have Louisville at 9. This might surprise some people, but I have Oklahoma State at 8. And only because if you take away that Central Michigan game in which the refs kind of blew the game for them, then all of a sudden they're a one-loss team that's fighting for a playoff spot. So they're still pretty high uh, in my regards. And then I have Oklahoma at seven. Spence? So for me, I'm going to have Oklahoma at nine, actually. I'm going to have Wisconsin at eight, and then Louisville at seven. Uh, my number nine is going to be Colorado. Eight is going to be Penn State, and seven is going to be Oklahoma. All right. My number nine is going to be Penn State. My number eight is going to be Washington. 
Hmm. And my number seven is going to be Oklahoma <laughs> Wild. <laughs> you look like you're going to oh. kill me. So, you, so you're going to have Washington drop that many spots after winning a game? I am. But then again, this is my own top 25, so I go it based is, on... It also is your own show. This is, this is like... This should a, be nine, but I'm just th- not going to have them That's the that thing. Much. Like, I don't... I get the whole where you shouldn't fall if you win. If you lose, you should fall this much. That's not what I care about. What I care about is ranking the top 25 best teams in the country. That's like that's why I have Louisville at 16. I think all you guys have them in the top 10. They got embarrassed by Houston. Absolutely embarrassed. So do I think Louisville is one of the seven or eight best teams in the country? Absolutely not. And that's why when we get to the top six, it'll be even more fun. Josh, let's hear your top six. Okay, so my top six, I agree with you. I don't think Washington is one of the top five, even top six teams in the country. But based off of last week's rankings, I'm not going to have them fall that much, and I'm going to keep them at six. At five, I have Wisconsin. They are the most underrated team in the top ten, I think, even though I'm putting them at five. At four, I have Clemson. At three, I have, I want to say I have a very injury-prone Michigan team and a very inconsistent, which is why I think they're going to lose to Ohio State, who I have at two. And at one, I have Chattanooga. Good call. I read that wrong. It says Alabama, <laughs> but um, just just barely. So I have Wisconsin at six, UW at five. Despite their, uh, you know, falling apart in the second half against USC, I still think they're a very good team. Then I have Michigan at four, Clemson at three. Uh, I like Clemson over Michigan, especially with Wilton Spate now being hurt. Clemson having a pretty high-powered offense with Wayne Gallman really picking it up now. And then I've got Ohio State at two and Bama at one. I'm going to say I have Washington at six. I'm going to keep them there. I think um, the win over ASU wasn't as demanding as everyone thought it would be, so that's why I have them still there. I have Wisconsin at five. They are the quiet killers of this college football playoff. I mean, you haven't heard anything from them, and they're sitting in the top ten already and have them for the last couple of weeks. Clemson at four, Michigan at three, OHIO State at dose, and Alabama at one. So my list is a doozy, all right? So for my number six spot, I'm going to have Washington. For my number five spot, I'm going to have Chattanooga. And why is that, And no, I'm not kidding. Because (laughs) when I made the list, I put Clemson twice. And uh, turns out you usually don't do that. And uh, thus led to a problem. He's just too lazy to figure out. I just noticed the problem now. the team is. That's a problem. And it's really complicated. So my number four spot is now Michigan. Uh, at number three, I'm going to have Clemson, two at Ohio State, and then one Roll Tide Bama. So, uh, Chattanooga playoffs? I wish. All right. They'll make the FCS playoffs, that's for sure. All right, so for my number six team, I'm going to go with Clemson. At number five, I'm going to go with Wisconsin. I like what Brady said, how they're like going under the radar. No one's really given them any love, when in reality, they have a really good chance to make the top four. No, honestly, look at my ranking. Because they're going to be in the Big Ten. I had them at eight, and they might If they win that Big Ten title game, there's no reason Wisconsin should not be in. At number four, I have USC. And I'm going to tell you guys why when I'm done with my top four. Three, I got Michigan. Two, I got Ohio State. Number one, I got Alabama. As I mentioned earlier, the whole point of the college football playoff is to have the four best teams in the country. Watching the USC-UCLA UCLA game last night, the commentators were saying, other than Alabama, there's not a better team in the country right now than USC, and I don't blame them. Ever since they made the transition with Sam Darnold, no team has looked better. And like I said, Michigan struggled against Iowa. Um, Ohio State, they barely beat a terrible Michigan State team yesterday. Barely. Clemson, I've been saying this for weeks. I have not been impressed with Clemson at all. I think they've been winning some close games. SC... My goodness, they've just been steamrolling over their competition. I think right now, and I think number four is being not as generous as I should be, but that's what I got to say. And also, the um, commentators were talking last night, they all have them in their top six. So it's not like I'm just taking this out of my ass right now. Professional ESPN people, which obviously mean nothing nowadays with how ESPN is, but they have them in their top six. So a lot of people do it as well, but that's my top four. Guys, hit me with it. So... Here comes our UW talk for the week, but if USC is as high as we all have them ranked, then UW essentially lost to a top 10 team as their only loss. Honestly, like I said, I have USC at 10. I think they're a really strong team, but I still think UW is a little stronger, and I still think they deserve to be in the top five. Honestly, I think you see them 
beat up on Washington State this week, and then I think you see them have no problem in the Pac-12 championship if they play Utah or Colorado. They play USC again, it's going to be tough. But that's why I'm not penalizing Washington for one loss to that great well, USC see, I'm not. I'm not penalizing them from the loss. I'm just saying – I think SC is a better team than Washington, yeah. and I don't know how you can say that Washington is a better team. Like Spencer and Brady, I know what Josh is thinking, but do you honestly think that USC is a better team right now than Washington? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I think they do because they have the full package. They're everything on offense. They're everything on defense. Their special teams is killer. The, the, all three phases of the ball, they're killing it. But, watching, week in and week out. Watching, USC's blocked two kicks and two Watching games. Sam Darnold play quarterback last night, my goodness. That, That's unreal. The I've never seen a well, – I mean, I'm sure I have. I'm just being being generous. But the way – he does not – he's not scared of getting hit. He kind of reminds me of watching an Andrew Luck kind of quarterback. I was just going to say that because I was talking to Brady about it last night. And on the field, not off the field, but on the field in college and maybe Luck in the pros, I see a cross between Johnny Manziel and Andrew Luck. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, going back to our top six teams or so, Wisconsin and Michigan have no offense, almost at all. Like, I watch them week after week, and their offense looks almost non-existent. So why is everybody so high on them just because they have a good defense? Really, When UW's good from both sides of the ball. You say Michigan has no offense they, when they they've, s- they've scored the most points than they have in 111 years. That's when they had their starting quarterback. Yeah. Look at the, look, look even look with, at what the, what, and they've been without a starting quarterback for one game. Even with look Spain, at what O'Korn did last, this week, though. Okay, even, Indiana's a good team, though. Even with so I'm not going to knock him for that. that. He got less than 100 yards, though. When you see so Michigan, did Jalen Hurts, and he's leading the number one team in the country. And that was against an FCS opponent defense at home. Okay, when you see Michigan go up against these tough Big Ten teams, though, they don't Maybe. put points on the board. But they get wins, do they not? Okay. Did but they not get a win against? I'm just saying you put them against. I didn't know I did that. A, I'm just saying they're not putting up points. They seem to beat up on Rutgers, but they don't put any points up against teams like Wisconsin. They put up 14. I mean, I, I just don't – I'm not super impressed with them. So I have them at four because they have one loss. But. Yeah, but didn't Washington only put up like 21 against Arizona going into overtime? Do yeah, me, but your, your, Arizona your argument, has two wins. Wow, your argument just now was how can you be so high on Michigan and Wisconsin when all they have is a defense, and you backed that up with was, oh, Michigan only scored this many points – on Wisconsin, who has a good defense. That is an invalid I'm just going to say this really they quick. We're all sports fans. We all know the saying, defense wins mm. championships. Yeah. You can score as many points as you want, but it, it all comes down to defense. Whether you're scoring 100 points a game, whether you're scoring 5 points a game, what matters is the defense. But like I said, regardless of if Washington has a better offense, if this team has a better defense, I just based mine on who I think the four best teams in the country are. To me, and I right now those are those are my top I four. Think I totally agree with you on who is playing as the best team in the country and who are the best teams in the country. And I think that your top four was spot on. The reason that I didn't have USC ranked that high or even really expanded more on my top four was because, like I said, last week's rankings. So I think putting USC at 10 is justified, but I understand where you're coming from, especially as an SC fan and a Pac-12 fan. I think the Pac-12 needs all the love that they can get because people just don't watch their games as much as they should. But if you're ranking the top four or top six best teams, I agree with what the, I agree with you. I agree with what the commentators are saying. SC should be up there. But as of right now, with their current record and the way that they've turned their season around, I think 10 is exactly what And really should. quickly, though, none of this happens if Colorado wins this week. Because then Colorado, if SC doesn't make it to the Pac-12 title game, like I'm just saying, I think SC only makes it in the top four if they get to the Pac-12 title game and they beat UW. They're going to be fourth at the end of the year, that's all I'm going to (laughs) say. Well, it's going to make the next few shows very interesting seeing how it plays out, but let's get to a more lighter note. Oh my god. The Q&A. Yay! All right, let's start with 152 questions, my goodness. Now this one, it's the very top comment, and I love it. This is from Chris Lee, has 17 thumbs up. How will Chattanooga rebound after being upset by Alabama? With they're a gonna, win. With they're going to put their mind to the test next year. LSU. To be Keep, honest, that's a great question. Keeping it on Alabama, Ice Fry wants to know, is the current Alabama team one of the top 10 teams that we've ever seen? Also, hashtag Zane for Heisman. Overall or Alabama? Alabama, like top 10 greatest teams of all time. I'm going to say that's too early to tell until they win a national championship or until they make the playoffs. Well, I mean, to make the playoffs. Because obviously they're going to make the playoffs, but to me, I don't think so. Not yet. Not yet. Emmett Cleary, or Clear, I'm probably messing up that name as I always probably. do, says yep. two things. Houston is dangerous when healthy. Will they go to New Year's Six? And how about them Ducks? First of all, how about them Ducks? 
They did SC a huge favor by beating Utah. Great win. And it's good to see um, Oregon How back. about that Hopefully. win, though? It was a great, that catch at the end. Josh and I were literally, like, watching my phone for, like, five minutes with, like, two seconds left, waiting to hear what the final play was. Apparently, they were just reviewing it. We didn't know what was going on, but it was good to see them win. As to Houston, I think it's too late for them to really make any statement to be in the New Year's Six. For New Year's Six, no, but to make a quality bowl game? I think they still can. Obviously, we've seen they're a very dangerous team. They're a very good team. I have a question for you guys. Oh, Blake, you can read this name. I think it's Vinayak Swaroop. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad does Michigan need Wilton Spate for the upcoming Ohio State game? Like, 69. <laughs> they need him badly, okay? If they don't have, I already think if they if they have him playing, they're not going to win. But if they don't have him starting, oh, God, it's going to get ugly, and it's going to get ugly fast. Honestly, okay? I don't see that much of a difference between O'Corn and Wilton Spate. Michigan's offense, like I said earlier, is pretty non-existent to me. So I think their chances are maybe a little worse without him, but... I don't see a big difference. Tyler, UN, this is a very good one. It's fourth and goal. You're down by five. Who do you want as your QB? JT Barrett or Deshaun Watson? Lamar fourth. Jackson. <laughs> That's not an option, Brady. Ah, damn. Wait, fourth and goal, down by five? Yeah. It was so, Brady, you need, you need a touchdown to win. Watch Deshaun. Watson, better thrower. Run Deshaun the ball. Watson. JT Barrett. Fabulous Burger wants to know, what was more surprising? Iowa State beating Texas Tech 66 to 10? Or Kansas getting their first win over Texas in 78 years? I'm going to say the Kansas one, purely because of what they did to the goalpost after <laughs> the game. They brought down the goalpost and carried it out of the stadium. I'm going to say both, honestly. because I mean, Spencer, Iowa you can't choose both. One. You have to pick one. That's the question. Fine. Iowa State over T-Tech. They were able to hold Mahomes to a very small margin of numbers, and he was red hot coming into that game. It's That's one thing to hold Mahomes man. to a very small amount of numbers, but when you're one of the worst teams in the country, let alone the Big Ten. Cyclones. My gosh, or Big 12, I should say. Yep. That I was shocked when I heard that final score. Patrick Mahomes, I'm, 18 for 36, 219 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. The fact yeah. that he only threw the ball 36 times is beyond me. Like, yeah. th- those aren't his numbers. Listen to this. Those aren't. The quarterback for Iowa State, 14 for 18 for 285 yards. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to say that the Iowa State game was more surprising, but, man, Kansas hasn't Shout beat Texans Kansas. in so long. It was probably since, what, Kansas the last— Kansas hasn't beat anyone in last very time, long. Last time they beat Texas, Perry Ellis was probably, what, 10 years old or something? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a college basketball joke. Brady Vernon showed it to me. Bring it back. <laughs> Richard Nixon wants to know, which I love this. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> Temple beat SMU, who beat Houston, who beat Louisville. Does that mean Temple is better than Louisville? No. Yes. Come on. <laughs> yes. DG Productions wants to know, how good could the Gators be if they had a somewhat decent quarterback? I would say a good team. I would say a pretty good team. Mm -hmm. No, I'd say really good, like playoff contention good. If they had, had like, a Deshaun Watson as their quarterback with that defense, they'd be competing with Bama, honestly. Who was their quarterback last year they got? Greer, wasn't it? Yeah, Yeah, Greer. Greer. He was a good quarterback. If they still had Greer... They'd be competing yeah. right now. Del Rio just didn't get it done, in my opinion, even though he's hurt now. Matthew Jackson wants to know, does Jalen Hurts deserve to be in the Heisman conversation this year? Absolutely. Not after his showing against Chattanooga. <laughs> Woo! Actually, yeah, probably. With the loss to Houston, can Lamar Jackson still catch up to Zane, the God, Gonzalez? It'll be a close one, but, yeah. but yes. Because Zane did hit a 50-yarder this weekend against Washington with Dang. ease. I'm pretty sure it went over the stands into that little, little river or lake that's behind the stadium. You I'm mean sure. Lake Washington? Okay, Lake Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my history. <laughs> Just geography, you <laughs> idiot. I know. That was, anyway. Okay. God. Can I propose I mean, a question for myself? Um, <laughs> so Josh Schaefer asks... Actually, let me just give you some backstory. The FCS released its top four seeds for the annual FCS playoffs. And here are the top four seeds. North Dakota State, obviously. Shocker. Eastern Washington. Mm -hmm. Jacksonville State. Powerhouse. Jack Rabbits. And James Madison. So my question, where the hell is Chattanooga? This is a monstrosity. Well, you know... I, think I am was, not okay. I said that word. Too many people sleep on them. It's just not okay. Well, this is the reason why. I believe, I think they said the, the top eight teams, I think, have a first-round bye. Yes, they do. Like, they need viewership to watch this FCS tournament. 
So put Chattanooga at nine, have him play an extra game, put him on TV for people to watch, more ratings. That's like that's the only reason why they're not. Here's my in thing. Top Chattanooga four is not even going to play in the FCS championship and they'll still find a way to win. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch it. <laughs> Just watch. Do you think Oklahoma is the best two loss team? Uh, I can see that. I feel like our answers change for this question every week, but I'm gonna say yes. At this game point, by game. At this point. I'm going to say I don't see why not because they played incredibly well against West Virginia. Does Colorado have a chance at a playoff? No. No. <laughs> no. no. It should be ranked 10th. Let's see. What are Christian McCaffrey's chances at the Heisman after the monster performance versus Cal? Zero. The LMA same amount. Bye. The same amount of chances as I have of getting with that really cute blonde girl that we see like every day in the dining hall. None. <laughs> um, let's Good thing you said that. Not <laughs> yeah. Um, cute though. Yeah, she was the Alabama Chattanooga game rigged? There's no way they could only score three points in a real game. Yes. <laughs> Definitely rigged. Look at the punt. I, I heard something about maybe they got some Pac 12 refs to ref that game or something. <laughs> Pac 12 after dark refs. Thank God we can't get fined for criticizing the referees. Marshmallow Ryan wants to know would Chattanooga beat Arizona State? Easily. I 100% think yes. they would. Yes. yes, they would. I think they would 100%. <laughs> if ASU is at full strength, no, but jeez, man, I don't understand how. I mean, yeah, they're they're undermanned, but how 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 are they this bad? I've been saying it all year. When I when they were five and one, I said that they're worst one loss team. This is a fun question, guys. What's your favorite bowl game? The national championship. Oh, come no, on, no, 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 I say, no, I say no. we pick come outside on. of the New Year's Six. Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say uh, the Outback Bowl because I was at it two years ago, hmm. and uh, I saw. Odell make the one-handed catch against Iowa in Raymond J Stadium. Huh. So uh, I'm gonna say that one. Nice. I kind of I like the pinstripe bowl because they play it at Yankee Stadium. Obviously the pinstripes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Re- really cool bowl game. It's some of the lower teams. IU and Duke played in it last year. Really cool thing about that game. IU had a running back who scored his very first touchdown of the year in that game. His name was Alex Rodriguez. I kid you not. <laughs> did he test positive for steroids? No, he did not. All right, just want to double check. Honestly, I think my favorite's probably the Hawaii Bowl because the, oh. team, the teams they send there are always just so terrible. But it's Same with the Bahamas Bowl, but too. It's, it's basically their reward for, like, hey, you won six games. You get to go to Hawaii. <laughs> oh, God, Arizona State. <laughs> Same, with, yeah. Same with the Bahamas Bowl. Same thing, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the Holiday Bowl. I've been twice now. The stadium itself needs a reserva- uh, reservation. It needs a <laughs> renovation. Uh, Qualcomm, where the Chargers play. But San Diego is a great city. They have a whole bunch of festivities. They have a parade. The two schools that are, are from the Big Ten and the Pac-12. It's like the, I don't want to say the JV Rose Bowl, but honestly, it is it is one step down from the Rose Bowl. I, two years in a row, I, I loved it. How fun would that be, though, to go to Hawaii or Bahamas for one of those bowl games? Possibly taking the show to Hawaii or the Bahamas to do a do podcast? It. Well, I'm kind of I'm kind of sad that Brady brought it up, but I was gonna say mine was the Bahamas Bowl, just because I mean, come on, a bowl game in the Bahamas, like the ending of the one was it two years ago? Oh yeah, between Central Michigan yeah. and the other team where it was like that crazy just lateral. Wasn't that when the guy hurtled too? No. Yes. Is that when was it? Oh, that was the game where he hurtled in the last play, oh. hurtled, ran towards the pylon, oh. dove out of bounds, hurtled the guy. It was awesome. Yeah. Alrighty. I remember that. Where do you believe Oregon went wrong? And how long till they're back on track? Should they fire Mark Helfrich? I feel like this win against Utah, first off, kind of saved his job. Not that it was on the line, but I feel like getting this win just solidified them that they still can be a threat. How long till they're back on track? I honestly think probably next year or the year yeah, after. I don't think anyone year. expected him to be this Considering terrible. Considering their quarterback is a freshman, a true oh, freshman, yeah. he's a stud. And Justin Herbert's looked pretty yeah. promising. So I think they went wrong when they started bringing in all the alternate uniforms. Oh, God. Um, no, I'm kidding. But honestly, I, I, I'm not really sure where they went wrong. I just simply think that they aren't that great of a team this year. Of course, their offense can still pose a threat. Um, when will they get back on track? I don't see Oregon being a powerhouse again for years. I think they'll get back on track. I think they'll be a mediocre to good team. I don't see them as a top 10 team for at least four years. Blake, someone asked you this question. Are you going to make a game to remember for Chattanooga, Bama? Well, like I said, I was going to, but for some reason, because of that overlaps of the damn Texas-Kansas game, there's no footage of their field goal. There's no footage of, like, that huge hit they had on Jalen Hurts. There's, like, nothing. So, unfortunately, I just can't do it. That Jalen hurts my feelings. Oh. I'm sorry. Should I leave? (laughs) That's enough to get me kicked off the show. (laughs) Now, this one, I I don't want us to discuss, because I know this one could be a really strong topic, but 
Um, Big Finch wants to know, should Todd Graham get fired? No, not a chance. Yeah. I'm honestly going to say yes. Five in a row, that's all I'm going to say. Five in a row, and having one of the worst secondary defenses in the country, they have played bad. I'm going to say no, because yes, you have the worst secondary in the country, but there really isn't a whole lot you can do about that right now. He has a very good recruiting class coming in this year, mm. one of the best quarterbacks coming in next year. He'll probably get redshirted. Mm, he'll so move some things around. He'll move some things around, move some people around. But I think if he doesn't do well, if it's a similar season next year as he did this year, he will be gone. But this year, he's fine. Yeah, I think he's fine. But I think if they struggle next year, he should be on the watch. Spilled Coffee said, at least Chattanooga held Bama to 70 yards in the first quarter. But if Florida were to win out and somehow beat Bama in the SEC title game, is there a chance they can make it to the playoffs? No. No. Oh, God. Is that a, what, what is Too that? big is of a hill yes to no? I, I, <laughs> Did they beat Bama? Because that's the thing that no one's ever <laughs> talked about. If Alabama somehow loses to Auburn this weekend, Jeez, or they lose in the SEC title game, it's a possibility. What's happening to Bama? Well, as, I mean... College football committee bias. Alabama will probably move up somehow, even though they're at number one. <laughs> so we're just going to have to wait and see. If Virginia Tech wins their final game and goes to the ACC championship, do they have a chance against Clemson? Love the show, by the way. This is from King Lawler. Well, considering they almost couldn't beat Notre Dame, I'm going to go with no. I'm going to say yeah. Without a doubt, I think Virginia Tech has a chance. I agree. Ditto. Uh, I'm going to say yeah. And t- possibility they beat Clemson. Honestly, at this point, anyone can beat Clemson. So it's not saying much. <laughs> okay. Uh, I did get a DM from someone. I was actually I was actually texting him or messaging him during the Chattanooga game. So shout out to to him whose name I I, I don't remember offhand, but you know who you are. So shout out to him. <laughs> he also said, "Can't wait to hear you guys talk about K State on the show." Um, we don't really have a reason to talk about him, but I'm saying K State right now. So you're welcome. Do you see K State getting better or worse over the next couple Is that of years? Him? Antonio Lewis? That is him. I see them getting better, Antonio. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You just got if so If Western excited. Michigan played Chattanooga, who would win? Is that even a question? Western Michigan. Western Michigan. Western Michigan. If, Ch- if Chattanooga were to rematch Bama at home. All 12,000 other fans. <laughs> I think it would be a close game. They're, They're a high school size stadium. All right. All right. Well, once again, we're in another like new area this week. It seems like every week we're moving to a different spot, but we always move. But yet those bells, those bells just keep staying with us. They're ringing. No, Josh, for the ninth time, no, it's not you that's ringing the bells, but it is the bells for the Pickums. Ring the victory bell. That time. Oh goodness gracious. Oh yeah, it's the victory bell that's ringing right now currently. But as we always do every week, we. Well, I should say me, because, oh my god, have I slipped. We awfully predict the, the games for the upcoming week by Spencer guessing who is, who's going to win. And uh, we have another special guest in studio this week. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Greg. Thanks, guys, Greg. We appreciate it. Yay, Greg. All right, Greg. Well, Yay, Greg. So now Chase and Garrett both got 12 right. Out Emily of got out of 14. 12? Emily got 8 right. So the question is, can you get more than 12 right? I think so. All right. Now, as we do with all the pickums, though, first of all, we have to go over the leaderboard. I don't even remember who I picked and or who won. <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs> Leading the way is Lyle with 64 points. Hey, Lyle's oh. finally winning. Make- Lyle's you were winning last winning. week. Never mind. He's winning been winning. Making winning. a comeback in second place is Spencer oh, God with bless. 50. <laughs> God bless. With 58 oh. points. You're only six points behind. Oh, I just got so In scared. third place is Josh with 54 points. I'm coming for you, Spencer. Oh, and tied amazing. for last with 53. Yes! <laughs> I'm not by myself! <laughs> tied for last is me and Brady with 53 points. I, I have just completely just <laughs> You fallen. go from first two weeks ago. <laughs> it My plan my plan just failed, okay? Oh, God. I just went completely. You disappeared just like ASU's offensive line. Oh, my goodness. There's well, two ASU online jokes in the show, Josh. Ready, set, begin. LSU at Texas A&M. Uh, I think you got to go with the Tigers in this one. I think they're going to rebound. Hopefully they can get the offense started. Hopefully Leonard Fournette plays a uh, good game. Yeah, I like LSU too. I think uh, A&M's slipping, and uh, despite the loss to uh, Florida this week, LSU bounces back and has a and gets the win over the Aggies. I'm going to say even if, it's, even if Texas A&M has been falling at Kyle Field, Texas A&M has played really well at home, and that's going to give them the boost this week. 
Texas A&M, yes, they're a great home team, but LSU is a solid road team. Leonard Fournette is going to have a solid game this week. He only played half last week, so LSU in this game. I'm going to take LSU. Uh, the way Texas A&M, uh, Texas A&M has been playing the past couple weeks, I don't really, uh, I don't see him being LSU. No Trevor Knight. I don't think Texas A&M can get this done. I'm going to go with LSU. Well, uh, you guys all forget about that Trevor Knight was injured. Maybe, but I'm still sticking into my pick because I'm loyal. No, you're not. <laughs> TCU at Texas. Ugh. Oh, boy. This is the toilet bowl of Texas. Um, <laughs> I totally forgot this game was in the pick. I'm, I'm going to go with Texas because hashtag Charlie Strong. Stay strong. <laughs> I like that. Get that trending. As pathetic as Texas He's was last up. week, um, this is a rivalry game, and one bright spot for the team this year has been Deontay Foreman, so I'm going to take the Longhorns in this game. Uh, I'm going to go TCU just to go against Charlie Strong. So uh, Never go against Charlie Strong. Stay strong. TCU. Texas, did. Hook em, horns. Go Texas. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Texas also. Uh, I think they bounced back from Kansas. I don't see them losing too well. I could see them losing two in a row, but I think they want some redemption after losing to Kansas. This is Charlie Strong's gonna last game as head coach. I feel like that Texas team is going to be rallied. I think they're going to want to pull a win for them. So I think Texas gets this win convincingly. Nebraska at Iowa. Two states no one wants to live in. Go. Uh, God. Go Big Red. No question. Huskers take this one on the road. Definitely definitely Nebraska. Uh, I know a couple of friends at Iowa. And uh, sorry, Nebraska. I think this is going to be a unanimous sweep. I'm going to go Nebraska in this one unless Blake is an idiot and picks Iowa. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you guys. I see Nebraska winning. Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> really? Go figure. Washington at Washington State. Apple Cup. This is a great game. Uh, I, I, I was going to pick Washington or Washington State. I really was. But after the way that they played last week and the way that they totally choked away the lead in the second half, I got to go with UW. They're the better team on the road. It's going to be a great game. Don't sleep on the Cougs. But let's be real. The Cougs are going to Coug it up, and the Huskies are going to take the Apple Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I think it's going to be a close game, but... I like the Huskies. Jake Browning, this one's for you. He's going to snap against the Cougars and watch Washington fly away with this win. UW, uh, I think they've solidified themselves as a solid team, even though with the loss, I still am in the boat where they're not a top-tier team, but they're a good team. UW's winning this game. I'm going to agree with Lyle. I think it's going to be close all the way to the fourth quarter, but I'm taking UW. Up until last week, I had Washington State winning this game. But the way they performed against Colorado, yikes. I'm going to go man. with UW. Hell yeah. It's a good high five. A great, high, a great five. high five. Boise State at Air Force. I think it's going to be a good game. I'm, I'm so close to taking Air Force in the upset, but I'm going to have to go with the Broncos. Um, I don't have family in the Air Force, so Boise State. <laughs> Chase. <laughs> I'm going to have to say Boise State. Their reason why they're ranked, reason why they're 10-1, and, and they're going to take this dub easy. I'm going against you guys, the Thunder and Lightning of Air Force, so I'm going to go with the Air Force. I'm going to go with Brady. I haven't picked an upset yet, so I'm going to go Air Force. Man, I like where this is going. I was going to pick Air Force the entire time, but now I don't feel so stupid, so I'm going to go with, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Air Force on this one. You don't feel stupid? Come on. This, <laughs> is, this one is probably, I think, in my opinion, the most underrated game of the entire weekend. I was about to say. Toledo at Western Michigan. Oh, this is going to be a great game. Um, Toledo's going to bring some firepower. I think Toledo has a great chance of pulling off the upset, but I think I'm going to have to go with the Broncos in this one. They're playing great football. This game is, like, Toledo was a couple spots away from being ranked this week. This could have been almost... Not in my <laughs> rankings. In the Harris Highlights <laughs> rankings, they're now 25th. This was, I mean, this was very close to being a, a ranked game, which no one would have picked at the start of the year. But I'm really excited to see this game, but i got to stick with Western Michigan and the way they've been playing. Uh, Toledo has been playing well, and they're a good team, but especially with Western Michigan rowing the boat, finally at home, that's going to be the decision maker for me. Row the boat, Western Michigan, West staying undefeated on the season. I'm going to go with Western Michigan also. I love Western Michigan. I'm going to go with them as well to get the win. Georgia Tech at Georgia. This would be a great game, but the fact that this game is in Athens... I'm going to have to go with the Bulldogs. I'm with you on that one. I don't have a ton of faith in Georgia Tech. And despite a iffy year from Georgia, I think they still have some firepower to that team, which is why I'm going with the Bulldogs. 
Uh, I was about to say Georgia Tech, but since it's at home in Athens, Georgia Tech can hang with the biggest, best of them, but I'm going to say the Bulldogs for now. My man Nick Chubb's going to run all over that Georgia Tech defense. I'm going Georgia in this game. This is from my buddy uh, up in Georgia, Blake. Go Bulldogs. Hey. See, my opinion, home field advantage means nothing in a rivalry game. It absolutely. I mean, okay, it means something, but it's it's not I think as much it means as more in a rivalry as much game. as you guys think. I'm going to go with Georgia Tech in this one. I really like their offense, and Georgia has been a fairly disappointing team this season. Finally, I'm not going to be in last place this in week. Got that with like two seconds left. The Iron Bowl, Auburn at Bama. What a game! But Alabama, they upset Chattanooga. I think they're going to ride the momentum from that game into the Iron Bowl. It is. In Tuscaloosa, I believe, mm -hmm. senior day, I got to go with the Tide. I think this is going to be a really good game. Not quite Chris Davis type of game, but... Nothing I'm, will ever be Chris Davis type of game. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it, but I think... I like Alabama pulling away a little bit in the fourth quarter for a win. I think this is going to be the best game of the night. And by far, because it's going to be a defensive battle, yet again, coming from an Alabama team. But still, I'm going to take Roll Tide in this one. Auburn won 55-0 against Alabama A&M. Alabama barely beat Chattanooga. I'm going to have to go with Alabama on this one. I'm going to go against you guys so far. I want to see an upset, and I'm going to go Auburn. Weeks ago, I had Auburn Time's winning this up, game. Time's up, doesn't count. Oh, you're funny, Josh, when you took 25 of those 60 seconds. So I'm not <laughs> going to consider you. I was you. done up to 10 seconds. I had, a, I had Auburn winning this game a few weeks ago because I thought this was going to be a game for playoff implications. But because Auburn did lose that game, to Georgia two weeks ago. They completely hurt their chances. It made me question my decision. But after seeing the way Alabama played against Chattanooga, I think Auburn is going to want this game a little more than Alabama. I'm going to take the Tigers on this one. I'm going to say a quick stat really quick. I like stats. Auburn has a 7-3 and three record in Tuscaloosa. Oh. So, Ooh. even with it being in Tuscaloosa, Alabama home crowd, like you said, rivalry game, Something new. Mm, there you go. There you go. Notre Dame at USC. So I think just like I said last week, USC and UCLA was a good game, except for the fact that USC essentially dominated the whole time. So it wasn't that great of a game. But rivalry games are rivalry games. So I think it's going to be close. I think the Irish are going to pose a threat. But ultimately, USC is going to pull out big time second half. So I'm going to go with the Trojans. I'll be there. Fight on. Well, I thought these games were supposed to be you know, ones that we picked that are going to be interesting. This isn't even going to be a game. Notre Dame is going to lose so badly in this game to USC. USC is going to hurt them like the Eagles hurt CJ Procise today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to keep it simple and say USC. Did he really just say it? No. Nope. Fight on. USC is going to win this one. I mean... Even though Notre Dame and Indy, I'm going USC. Yeah, I don't think Notre Dame really has a chance. Go USC. Fight on. <laughs> <laughs> USC. My God. <laughs> Not even close. Don't sleep on the fact that it's a rivalry game, but like, I think it'll be close for the first they half. Have Just like no I thought USC. Chance. I don't think it's like, it's close a, like how you thought though. UCLA. You were scared for no. UCLA. I said no, no, no reason. I, I to be said as, a, as an SC fan, I think you'd be more nervous about a rivalry. Josh, USC is top. ranked fourth in the Harris Highlights no, top think, twenty-five, and you're scared against an unranked Notre Josh, Dame team. I don't, I don't think it's close. I am one of the bus. I am one of the. <laughs> I think it'll be close. No, Lyman when there's fifteen right, minutes left in the first quarter. If, if, if I can, if I can give my score prediction, I will say forty-eight seventeen USC. I just think the first half is going to be closer than people think. So if I'm allowed to ask, Lyle, you're the Notre Dame fan. What's the worst thing about Notre Dame football right now? Is it their secondary quarterback thing? <laughs> offense, Where do defense? I begin? What's their number one problem? Well, Deshaun Kaiser has just totally tanked his way out of the first round of the NFL draft after the way he's played. Remember this when season. he was up there? I mean, he was he was at number one for a while until he kept playing the way he was playing. Until he then, played football. <laughs> not gonna lie, Josh Adams and Equinemia St. Brown, like I said last week, are the two bright spots of this team. But their defense is a joke. Their secondary, you guys won't agree with me, but it's worse than ASU's in my opinion. Yes. And that is saying it a is, lot. It's embarrassing to watch. <laughs> it's not simple. They lost to Duke this year. They <laughs> lost to Texas, who lost to Kansas. Like it's a joke. A game that every USC fan is gonna be watching closely oh this weekend. Utah at Colorado. I got dibs. Colorado. 
D the only reason you picked Colorado is because USC needs them to lose. And God you know damn that. right I picked them. Go Colorado. <laughs> Woo! Utah, I'm going to have some words if you don't win this game. Just kidding, but please win. I'm going to go with the Utes in Boulder, but if Colorado wins this game, I, I, I respect cry. that. No, 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 no. Hey, no. Let him go. No, I'm, I'm going to stop the timer for this one. You, you Make your picks. I'm going to go with Utah, but we do need to touch on this after. We, we talk, Josh, we talked about this earlier. And give him the time to talk. This is yeah, good. This is good. So I'm going to go with Utah, but Lyle, make your pick. I think Sefa Lufau goes off in this game and knocks SC out of the chances of going to the Pac-12 championship, so go Buffs. I'm going to say Utah in this game. Yes, Colorado's a very tough place to play, but I think Utah's been a better overall team. Yes, Colorado's a higher-ranked team, but I say Utah in this one. I'm going to take Utah also. I like Utah's offense, and I think they can get it done in Boulder. Well, I'm taking Utah without a doubt. You can't root it for Colorado on this one. So so this one I'm going to step back in. We have Greg, who's who's from L.A. as well. Greg's an SC fan. Blake's an SC fan. I'm an SC fan. And quick shout-out to, to, to Edward over here. He, too's from L.A., and he's, he's just hanging hey, with us today. He's an SC fan, too. Hey, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hi. <laughs> so, as an SC fan, as a Pac-12 fan, and simply as a college football fan and a journalist, I think USC is the most deserving team to win the Pac-12 South. You're not wrong. I'm not wrong. I think one of the, they're one of the top teams in the country right now. <laughs> I'm never wrong. No. So, with that being said, I think USC is a pass interference penalty away from clinching the Pac-12 championship against Utah. You're so right. It's unfortunate, but but I'm right, and I we saw that Utah game concluding exactly how it did, and credit to Utah, but also discredit to USC because they cost themselves that game. Additionally, Colorado was predicted to finish last in the South. Everyone everyone wrote them off, including me, and they kind of shocked everyone this year. So definitely a huge a huge shout out to Colorado. USC is the most deserving team, but if Colorado beats the Utah Utes, they have earned it, and they'll have my respect. I'm going to be bummed as an SC fan, but as all those other things that I said I was, I, I'm going to have the utmost respect for, for Colorado because they have earned it. That's all I have to say. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Not as beautiful as your Braveheart oh, Chad speech. That was great. Florida at Florida wait, 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 State. Wait, wait, wait. The fact you put the Rocky music in the background of it last week was even better. Thank you. I had those <laughs> nice touch. Florida at Florida State. Ooh. I think this is might be the best game of the week other than the Iron Bowl. I think I'm going to have to go with Florida State at home. I think home field advantage is going to play a factor in this one. And I think that Florida has been... I don't want to say inconsistent, but a little bit up and down. So I'm going to go with Florida State. I don't think it's the best game of the week. I think the best game of the week is one we haven't talked about yet, and Same. I'll let Blake get to that in a minute. But for this game, I like Florida State. I think Dalvin Cook and DeAndre Francois show up and give this D a really tough time for Florida. So go Knowles for this game. Honestly, I was at the beginning, I was going to say Florida State because of home field advantage and everything like that. But since Florida is riding the capture of the SEC East and the capture of stopping LSU and the and everything going for that, I'm going to take Florida in this one. We talked about this earlier in the show and the lack of the quarterback play for Florida. That's going to come in big for them because Florida State is a very solid secondary team. They have a great pass defense. I'm going to say Florida State wins this one on the defensive side of the ball, not on offense. Uh, I'm going to go against you, Brady. I do think Florida State wins, but I think their offense plays a big role. I think Dalvin Cook has a big game. Yeah. I like Florida State in this one. Now, really quick, guys, this wasn't on the pickums, but Brady did want yeah. this one to, to be in it. Another good rivalry game, Indiana and Purdue. Who wins this game? IU. Hell yeah. Spencer? Uh, hopefully Indiana, so I can get another pick right. Hell yes. I'm going IU. I'm going to be at that game, and you damn better know I'm going to be repping my... Crimson, murder, whatever the hell you want to call it. Cream and crimson. Go IU. Isn't it? Uh, just because I like Brady, I'm going to go IU. Woo! Oh, Josh is gone, but he's going to pick IU too. <laughs> Let's give him a second. Um, We all picked Purdue. Did you? Yeah. Well, then, I know you're lying, but even more reason to pick Indiana in a blowout. Yeah. They stuck with Michigan, by the way. They and did. Ohio State. And Penn State. Just Alrighty. <sighs> Michigan at Ohio State... 
You can't use the timer for this yeah. game, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that was the first time I've done the timer in like five minutes, to be totally honest, and he just cancels it like that. I was wrong. This is the best game of the week. Um, Michigan is undermanned, and this game's in at the Horseshoe in Columbus. I would love to see a Michigan win because if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been like at least five years, at six. least it's it's, it's been, been six. A while. It's been, it's a, been while. a while since Michigan beat them. I hope they win the game. I'm rooting for the maize and blue, but I think Ohio State takes this one at home. In Columbus, no Wilton Spate. The way JT Barrett and the Buckeyes have been playing the last few games, I gotta take Ohio State in this one. With Michigan not having a quarterback, with Michigan probably maybe not having Wilton Spade. With Michigan being at Ohio State, not even a question. As much as it is a rival game, as much as it is amped up, Ohio State is winning this game, no doubt. I say of all the games that we talked about on this list, this one will have the biggest margin of victory. And I say Ohio State is going to run the table against Michigan. Um, I'm going to go, I agree with what I was saying in the, uh, the, be- the beginning of the show. Uh, I don't like Michigan's offense at all. I haven't liked it all season. They do have a great defense, but I think Ohio State blows this up big. This is an amazing game to watch. We're all going to be watching it. We're all going to be watching for playoff implications, for just fun times, whatever. But I'm going to put a little extra on the line for this game. Oh, crap. If we're all picking the same team to win, why bother watching it? What's the point? Either we're all right or we're all wrong. So for that very reason, oh. go Big Blue, go into Columbus, get the win, go to the Big Ten Championship, a.k.a. that's to you, Josh, <laughs> and just show everyone what's up. So I think that Michigan is going to win this game. But we're just going to have to wait and see. But How Michigan, confident are you Michigan, when you say that? I'm like... Are you, are you saying that because I'm going to pick against these boys, or are you saying I believe in the boys in blue? Mainly because I'm not confident they'll win. I think they'll win. But well, we'll just have to wait and see. But this is this does, didn't, doesn't this make it a little more exciting, though, watching this game, knowing that I have I mean, Michigan? It's, I know it's going to be exciting because it's a rivalry game. I think it's just the fact that Michigan has zero quarterback and zero amounts of offense, but their defense is astounding. Do not get me wrong when I say that. Their defense, top-notch. But... Other than that, Ohio State, they're just the better caliber team. That's why I picked them. That's why you picked Michigan, so on and so forth. You heard it here first. Jabil Peppers comes in the third quarter, throws for a 30-yard touchdown pass, just like Russell Wilson, or caught a pass or whatever. Doug Baldwin threw Same it. stuff, whatever. I think Michigan gets the win. And now we, go to the, me in we go to the absolutely worst game. But the worst of the worst is between the 3-8 and eight San Jose State Spartans and the 1 in 10 Fresno Good State God. Bulldogs. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Now, I don't know who's going to be at this game. Obviously, there will be some people there, but I'm not sure. All right, now this is going to be a ooh, a, a doozy, doozy of a game that I don't know how anyone would want to go to it, but people are going to want to go to it. Brady, what is the cheapest ticket on stuff for this game? There are 211 tickets left in this game. It's at Bulldog Stadium. It's in California. Mm. Beautiful weather down in there. In San Jose. It's going to be low 70s. But they're $17 tickets. $17 tickets, my goodness. Well, it costs more to get into a high school football game. Well, I guess Come if on. you're a dude, you need, you need to be away from your basketball. overly attached girlfriend for a few hours. What better way than to spend it watching the Fresno State and San Jose State <laughs> football teams say? play? <laughs> Guys, who wins this game? Who cares? <laughs> uh, I'm going to take San Jose just because of record, and I know someone who goes to San Jose, so... That's my answer. Well, one of my amazing cousins recently graduated from Fresno State, went to the USC Fresno game with her last year or the year before, and for that reason, I'm going San Jose State. That's not very anti, anti there, Josh. Love you. All right, so I'm from Indiana. They got the Pacers. Paul George went to Fresno State. But he didn't play this past week, so I'm going to go San Jose State. <laughs> because I'm going to pick whichever mascot would win in a fight. And Spartans have a sword. Dogs are dogs. Go Spartans. I'm going to go Fresno State. Why? I was watching the USC Fresno State game 2005. I don't remember that game. Ooh, great great game, game the other day. Thank and you, uh, just for the fight they put up in that, I'm going to go Fresno. I like it. Correlation between Fresno State has one win. My God, 
They double that this weekend. Ooh. They get the dub over San Jose State. Lyle, who gets this win? Worst of the worst story time. <laughs> about two years ago, I'm at a college convention, and every booth has about the same things. A bunch of flyers, people talking. Oh, that I walk across a San Jose a San Jose State booth. They've got an iPad up of a bunch of football highlights. And me being a sports fan, I think... Was it one of think, Blake's highlights videos? No, it was not. Ugh. But me being a sports fan, I think to myself, hey, that's innovative, but not quite ASU innovative. <laughs> so I like San Jose State in this game. Go Beautiful. Spartans. Now, guys, this could be, like I said, the worst of the worst part two. But it is rivalry week. We are going to be going to two... Well, we're not going to be going to Tucson, but... Mentally, we'll be in we Tucson. We'll send one of our reporters down there to cover the game. We'll for send us. one of our Harris Highlight reporters yeah. down there to cover the game, but we'll be in Tucson. Go ASU ahead, Greg. versus University of Arizona. Guys, who wins this game? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, it's hate week, and it doesn't feel like hate week because we're bonding over disappointment <laughs> with the Wildcat fans. Um, we really have been, actually. We really have been. <laughs> yeah. players. Arizona State. <laughs> Everything went downhill for them after they lost their first game at the Coliseum with players getting hurt, and they've been inconsistent since then. They're starting to get healthier, but they're still so undermanned. But, guys, they're playing Arizona. They're playing Arizona. Okay. If ASU doesn't win this game, that's going to be pretty embarrassing. I'm going to say the Sun Devils are going to maintain possession of the Territorial Cup, and I think they blow out the U of A. Ooh. I think it's ugly. Uh, you said it pretty well, Josh. It's starting to hurt my eyes to watch these ASU games. I'm not going to lie. They need to snap this five-game win streak. And if they don't... (laughs) Win streak. (laughs) ASU couldn't go on a five-game win streak. They need to snap this five-game losing streak. And if they can't do it against U of A and their 200-person student section, (laughs) then then how can you ever do it? So I'm going to pick the Sun Devils in this game. I'm going to keep a little bit of faith saying that Manny Wilkins can get back to where he was at least a little bit to the, like, get back to where he was at the start of the season from a, you know, playing standpoint and take the Sun Devils. Since our wonderful Sun Devils have a five-game losing streak and we're going into Arizona, I think we're going to (laughs) lose. I really do. I think it's come to the point where we just... Throw away the papers, throw away the playbook, hope for the best, and I don't think our answer, our prayers will be answered because the Wildcats will beat us. They will take away our Territorial Cup. Is it ter- ter- Territorial Cup? Yeah. Okay, I quite did. I did. If you think you're going to get good music under this, you're not. You're no. Music no. You didn't know what the trophy was called? I, uh, we were at Sun Devil Stadium no, today, that, and I showed it I to didn't you. Want, I didn't want to I screw it. I showed it to you. Either it was way, there. Either way, I don't think we're going to win. I don't. I think we're gonna lose badly. Badly. Wow. Badly. I think I'm catching up on Spencer. I think I'm pulling away from Josh. There's been three positive things about this ASU team all season long. Zane Gonzalez. Shut up, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Our four-game win streak. Zane Gonzalez. It's not real part. Nikhil. And the uniforms. And Matt Hawk. All right. He has not yeah. been great. Three and, three and a half. Three and a half. The yeah. first half of the season. Yeah. Those three and a half things will lead the Sun Devils to victory <laughs> in this game and win the Spencer. It's a territorial cup, right? Uh, Apple Bowl. Apple Bowl. <laughs> it's the <laughs> Apple <laughs> Cup. As if it's the they Apple. Apples in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> the lemons. We All right, lemons. Territorials. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be ASU in this game. I think U of A has just been god awful. I gotta give props, to my man John Kenny, starting linebacker for U of A. He's a solid player. Went to my high school, so that's the only reason I'm giving him props for anything. But ASU is gonna win this game, pretty pretty easily. Now, I'm praying to God ASU wins because I made a bet with my girlfriend that goes to U of A. And oh. I don't want to lose that bet. So I'm saying ASU wins. I think it's really close. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I say Zane for a field goal and we win. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, all right. Oh. If that doesn't happen in the last game of the season, Zane Gonzalez gets a game winning field goal. Did he really play for us? Yeah. Uh, yes, he did. He oh. broke a couple of records. Oh, well, you're right. He you're is right. technically the greatest college kicker of all time. So I'm going to go with he did play for us. <laughs> Speaking of greatest college kickers of all time, the NFL needs to get him in the league now. Yeah, they it's do. gonna happen. I mean, I've been saying this for the last few weeks. I think Arizona's gonna win this game. 
ASU has just been nothing but disappointment. I mean, the games that they have won have been close. There's You can make cases for some of them games that you shouldn't have won. Um, Arizona, they've had a very, very, very tough season. I think they're going to be fired up. Um, talking with Paul McGlure, he is very frustrated with how the season's gone, and he wants to beat ASU badly. Like, he really wants to beat us badly. It will be his final career game. And all for these other seniors or whoever's going to be leaving, they they don't want the season 10 with another loss, with how disappointing it's been. They want to win. I honestly think that they're going to be more hungry than ASU is. I have not seen anything from ASU in the last five weeks that has shown me that they want to win a game. Have you Have you guys? No. Yeah. When? Other than Nikhil Harry, not Nikhil really. Nikhil Harry, Zane Gonzalez, Matt Hawkins yeah. doing well. Yeah, well, unfortunately, Nikhil three players. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's... Fiso. I think it's ugly. Kareem Orr had his first no. interception of the season this year. I, this past I game. do not like where this team is going. Do we going. still have an offensive line? No. Are, we're still searching for our offensive line. We can't. The question is, where is our secondary? <laughs> Bro, I'm trying it's to find. Lost. We can't it's find our own line. Field of Dreams corn along with Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> we can't find them. I, I mean, of course, I want ASU to win, but being realistic here, I cannot see them doing this. I'm not going to say it's going to be a blood. It's going to be close. It's going to be high score and low score. And I honestly don't know, but I do think Arizona will score more points than Arizona State. So they're sort of saying they're going to win. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It's a possibility. As we do every week. Spencer gives us a team he's going to root for because he is the most bandwagon fan in all of sports. So, Spencer, which fan it's sent you a team to root for this I can't this even week? argue at this point because I've gotten so many teams. That's true. This has become your thing now. It you is. It's my, it's my own little segment, and I like it. Now, if you have a team you'd like to spend spur of the day, they could fucking suck my dick. If there's a team you'd like... Russian? What the fuck was that? If there's a team you'd like Spencer to be a fan of, hit him up on Twitter, hit him up on Instagram, slide into those DMs at SPX09, and he will give you a shout-out and your team a shout-out. Spencer, which team are you going to be a fan of this week? Okay, so the first one is going to be the Campbell... Wait. The Campbell... Wait, all right, who's the next team? <laughs> no, this is first a good name. One, first, yeah, I was about to say it. The Campbell... Campbell Camels. The, wait, the Campbell See? Camels. Yes, not that easy to pronounce, the but Campbell still Camels. a team. The other one, I accidentally deleted the conversation, so I'm sorry whoever sent me this. But I had to say it because a friend of mine runs track at this school, and it's oh. the w- University of Wisconsin-Platteville. Oh. So, hey, Lars, how's it going, bud? <laughs> and the other school I have a couple of friends going to is Oshkosh in Wisconsin as well. Oshkosh? Oshkosh Titans. So I'm a fan of them. I've actually been a fan of them because the Bones, but that's a high school reference. But, you know, either than that, those are my couple teams. I didn't have a lot, so. Hey, three is more than a lot. I think that's the most you've ever had. (laughs) Well, that wraps up episode nine of the show. Lots of great games this week, lots of rivalries, lots of hatred that's going to go down. Lots of, lots of friendships that are going to be ruined. Really quickly, though, once again, huge thank you to Greg for joining us in studio. Hopefully your picks are better than Chase and Garrett so you can take commanding lead because we're tired. we're tired of hearing them complain how they're so great at making picks when they're not. So <laughs> hopefully you get 13 this week. Hopefully the picks go well. As always, we're always on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, MySpace, Tinder, Bumble, you name it. Hit us up. We like talking college football, and Josh has a Snapchat from his girlfriend. No, you, no, oh, no, 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 oh, not no, that? No, 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 okay, no, no. the other thing? To, I just wanted to say one more thing. Oh, so everyone remembered our, uh, our, our our bet last week between me and Spence. So if you want to check out a wonderful, wonderful picture of Spencer paying up on his bet, you can check me out on Instagram at JoshSchafer5. It's the same as my Twitter except without a two. <laughs> Here's what I'm picture. saying. Um, follow me at SPX09. <laughs> That's it. Or if you're just like any other dude out there and just not feel like following more dudes, you can listen to the show (laughs) on SoundCloud, as always. It's a great listen to while you're working out, driving to work, driving to school, getting it on with your girl, whatever it is. (laughs) As long as you're listening to the show, that's all that matters. Huge thank you. But yeah, great week. We'll see you next week. Have a great Thanksgiving. Eat a lot of food. And uh, we'll be back next week. Yay, sports. Go Devils, beat the Wildcats, beat the Irish. Let's go. Why not? Why not? Hey, don't sleep on Chattanooga against LSU. Oh, yeah.